so today I want to share um, this practice, multidimensional meditation. Um, this practice can be done exploring any number of different uh, qualities or aspects of experience. Um, I, I, I like to explore typically things that are more expansive or transpersonal or beautiful. Um, uh, although you can absolutely use this to explore things that are more contractive or difficult. Uh, it just takes a lot more um, steadiness and support and skill to do that. Um, because when you're, say, exploring, you know, uh, existential terror, let's say, for example, uh, it brings up a lot of existential terror. And to stay present with that is kind of challenging. Whereas exploring something like loving awareness, uh, it does bring up difficult things oftentimes, but um, there is that kind of constant refuge of, in this case, loving awareness that we can, we can go to. Um, so this is a multidimensional meditation on loving awareness. And I want to start just by saying a bit about loving awareness itself. Um, this is a quote from Jack Cornfield's book, No Time Like the Present. I think it's a beautiful pointer. And I'd invite you here to, to kind of meditate with the words. Jack says, rest in spacious awareness and feel the presence of love. The one who knows becomes the loving witness of all things you become loving awareness itself. The freedom of loving awareness is available. It just takes practice for you to remember it and to trust that it's always here. When you feel lost, stuck in a tiny part of the big picture, contracted or caught up, take a breath and visualize yourself stepping back. With a spacious mind, you can witness even these contracted states and hold them in loving awareness. So I think that's a beautiful description of what it is that this practice is aiming to cultivate. Um, and this practice aims to do that by in a way uh, stepping back um, not exactly in the way that Jack just described. We're not just stepping back and visualizing that, taking a breath. We're actually giving ourselves a few different ways that we can step back, a few different ways that we can approach loving awareness. And here I love to think of this uh, in terms of a, a multifaceted jewel. So if we have this multifaceted diamond or jewel, you can think of each one of the facets of the jewel as a perspective that we can take on the jewel itself, which in this case is loving awareness. So we have this loving awareness jewel. We can turn the jewel and we can see loving awareness from this perspective. And the different perspectives are different ways to meditate, different ways into loving awareness. So one of the ways in this practice that you're welcome to um, work with loving awareness is to invite it to arise. May loving awareness arise. It's a kind of aspiration or wish for loving awareness to arise, like social metta. Um, another way you might um, choose to step back and engage with loving awareness is by inquiring into loving awareness. What is it? What is loving awareness? I find that is a really nice way of uh, stepping back when I feel like I have no clue what the heck it is and feel like I'm kind of like a poser, like I'm just posing as loving awareness. It's like, oh, well, wait a second. What is loving awareness? Maybe I should ask that. Um, that's not the only way you can engage with the question, but I find it helpful. It gives me a place to go where I can feel authentically not like loving awareness. <laughs> and same with the may it arise. Sometimes we're not feeling it, and we, but we wish it were there. May loving awareness arise. At other times, we may really feel like we, we are getting loving awareness, um, in which case you might find the third facet here, the third way we can work with loving awareness helpful. I am loving awareness. Maybe perhaps that actually is a good way to engage with loving awareness in any given moment. And then there is the pith phrase, 
which is just pointing directly to the jewel itself, the inside of the jewel, seeing the jewel from the perspective of the jewel. Loving awareness, just loving awareness. And I, I wanna point out because this is a group of people who you, you all have experience with each of these different ways of practicing and others. And so in this practice, it's not that we're limited to these three or four different options. I mean, that's the, this is the instruction, this is the way in. Um, you know, the first choice when it's your turn, you can choose may loving awareness arise. Uh, you could also choose to say, what is loving awareness? Or I am loving awareness. Lastly, you might just say loving awareness, the pith phrase. And you could say anything else that relates to loving awareness. There is loving awareness. Loving awareness is like this. Um, any form of social practice that you've learned or that feels appropriate in the, in the moment, um, you're also welcome to go outside of these three or four choices and you know open up the different facets if that feels appropriate.